it sort of started as like an early midlife crisis. We all kind of hit 30, me and my buddies, and sort of realized that we weren't really doing what we'd like to be doing, despite not having any experience whatsoever in filmmaking. Uh, we took a camera, we took you know a, a cheap light and a cheap mic, and decided to start making these horror shorts. Me and Shane and John have known each other for years, and uh, we all, we've always had big ideas, stuff that we wanted to do. Actually, Shane and Francois brought me in and asked if I would uh, mess around with the audio and make some music. I was at a party, and Francois just told me all about it, and he wasn't supposed to. And I don't know if Shane's gonna. <laughs> I don't know if Shane knows that. He asked me a couple questions like, "Oh, how would you do this? And how would you do that? And how would you do this?" And I did a bunch of stuff. Buzz really liked it. Shane said he needs some background people for a party he was having slash filming. So he was like, you want, you know, can you maybe do a law enforcement shirt? You know. Hey man, can I slit your throat? And they seemed really happy with it. And that's, that's it. Then we did another one. <laughs> <laughs> The biggest challenge in the beginning was definitely having uh, like loftier visions than we were capable of. Like the very one of the very first things we did was uh, we did the nickel 48 hour horror challenge in 2017. But the story involved a party, and we were like, "What's the easiest way to film a party? Let's have a real party." And it was an awful idea. It was like 3 a.m. filming and being sober while everybody else is having a good time. It's sort of been a constant lesson to try and take our ideas compact them into something that we can actually like accomplish and sort of go from there. But every every film we make, we learn something else. The learning how to get out of your own way when you're trying to create a piece of music that has like a specific job in the movie. <laughs> trying to make the light look natural has been a, it's been a challenge. So you got you got to tell the story with your lighting, right? So uh, that's what I tried to do. Where I had to pretend or act, pardon me, that I was uh, extremely terrified. And it's just a hard thing to do and it's a hard zone to get into. Uh, Why? Stop it! For Christ's sake, stop it! And so it's, it's hard to psych, it, it's an energetic sort of thing to psych up for it was definitely tricky. At every single flick there's something that goes wrong, but we just learn to push ahead and that's the point. I tell so many lies on set. Because everybody's like, Hey, is this going to stain my skin? I'm like, no, of course not. Hey, is this going to hurt me? No, why would that hurt you? Yeah. <laughs> Did I hurt you just then? No. Oh, okay. Right. okay, that looks I mean, you definitely didn't, like, go easy on my eyeballs, but, like... <laughs> so there's a lot of hilarity there when they're like... Well, for me, anyway. <laughs> Francois knows, and Francois has caught on to my, uh, my shit. I covered him in latex, liquid latex, and, like, this oily, grease, shitty, black paint, and uh, anyway, he was like four days trying to pick everything off him that was uh, hilarious. Like every flick, despite how serious we're trying to make it, there's always stuff that like cracks me up. A lot of times when we're doing grind stuff and I'm in the shot, I'm trying my best to be serious and then it'll just end up being funny anyway. Paul's scene was he, there's a knock on the door and Paul has to turn around and like dramatically say, Hello? Yeah. Hello? <laughs> but his direction was to give my best wary hello. So I think I nailed that scene, really. <laughs> Starting with nothing and seeing a finished product and knowing that you did that with like people you actually give a shit about, you know, that's definitely. Yeah, best part for sure. I think these are the good old days now, and I try to keep that in mind every time we film that these are the moments that you're going to be looking back on in a few years. When we finish a shoot for a day, especially if it's a longer day or if it's a tougher shoot, if you're exhausted or you're at the very least tired, but you feel refreshed. Yeah. Definitely the most rewarding part of Ron Mind is becoming this creative collective. Like that's kind of been the goal from the start was to try and include as many people, all of our artists, friends, our creatives, comedians, actors, anybody we have that would get involved. That's definitely the, the greatest thing that's come out of Grind Mind for sure.